Hi. Hi, guys. How you going? So, we're going to try and learn about Colonel Tom Parker. So, in case you don't know me, my name's Louis. I'm a lifelong Elvis fan. I'm here searching for the truth so that we can defend Elvis against any people that are saying lies about Elvis. That's the bottom line. Anyone saying anything negative about Elvis, if it's not true, we are going to disagree and we are going to scrutinize these people and their comments to get to the truth. And we're going to do it together, guys. It's not just me, it's us. So welcome to my kitchen, welcome to my family, and I warn you, there's kids who will jump all over me and make lots of noise, but hopefully we've got a bit of time here now where there is um, no attacks from the children. So I don't know loads about Colonel Tom Parker, so I'm going to just go through it slowly. I have made videos about Colonel Tom Parker before, but it was a while ago, so I'm going to play them. And I'm going to refresh myself about Colonel Tom Parker as we go through it, because I'm still a bit, my memory's a bit not there with it. All I know is that the general thing around the world is that people think Colonel Tom Parker ripped off Elvis, and took 50% of his earnings, and that he's the reason Elvis did not make decent movies. They also think um, that he bought out the contract from Sun Studios, so Sam Phillips for 30,000, I think the figure was, and then from that propelled him to massive success, I think with RCA and with the movies and getting him on TV. I think generally people do think bad of the Colonel. Generally that is, tends to be what everyone has says. They all feel that he ripped off Elvis and held Elvis back, it, isn't it? Isn't that a general thing? I do think there's another side to the story. I think that Colonel did have his uses and he could open doors when he first met Elvis, but don't forget, Elvis, eventually, someone was going to find him. I really believe that. Colonel Tom Parker was in the right place at the right time. Everyone sell, says that he was a selling genius. He was a salesman genius, merchandising, things like that. He just knew how to get the best deals, to demand the highest price. And Colonel Tom Parker didn't want to see Elvis on TV unless Elvis was getting money. Because when Elvis was on TV like being interviewed, Elvis didn't like that because he just thought, well, he's not getting paid for it. Elvis, uh, sorry, Colonel Tom Parker wanted money for anything Elvis, which is why very quickly Colonel Tom Parker refused to allow Elvis to go on TV unless big money changed hands. So this is why actually he hasn't done loads of interviews, especially way back in the 60s. Um, so anyway, um, I'll be honest with you, generally, I do think that Colonel Tom Parker massively took advantage of Elvis. Um, I think his gambling problem just scares me. It was so serious and so bad. This must have seriously harmed Elvis. Did Michael Jackson own the publishing rights to Elvis Presley's songs when he bought ATV catalog? Oh, God. Now, that's a question. I'd have to look that up. But wasn't it the Beatles' rights that Michael Jackson owned? I don't know about Elvis Presley. I'd have to look that up. But hi, Victor. Hi, how are you? I always thought it was the Beatles. Maybe he did. Uh, so all I'm going to do, remember, I'm not the guru, the know-it-all. I'm going to learn with you guys. So first of all, I just thought we'll play around a bit as we look for things before I start reading things off. So I, I wanted to show you a video that I made. Let's just make sure it's come up. Here we are. I think I made this about a year ago. Um, let's just listen to it. It's just a short, so it's only a minute long. Let's, have a look. Let's see if it's going to play. I, mean, I, wasn't, I wasn't known at all until Colonel Parker started managing me, you see, and, and I got on RCA Victor, and 
working on television, and uh, no, then I started being known. I did all the promotion, the outdoor advertising, and he did the show on the stage, and the fans made it possible. So I did my part, Elvis did his show, and we were lucky. There is a love-hate relationship with Colonel Parker. Colonel did control Elvis. Part of that is okay. Elvis was the type of person who needed some control. I don't know who else would have done it. To be honest with you, I, I, I don't know who else was even capable. I don't know if Vernon was really capable of handling all that. The media, the planes, the contacts. He didn't have the networking that Colonel Parker did. They say anybody else could have done it, perhaps so. But I was happy to be the one that was with him. Okay, I made that think about a year ago. Let me just shut the drawer, the doors, because we can hear the dryer. Shut the door. Plus, I want to just see if I can turn over my food. I got my meat cooking, Tracy. How are you, Tracy? Today it's steak, pork bellies, and lamb. I'm not eating it at the moment. I'm going to eat it after the show. But I've already had a steak, and I cook it in the air fryer, Tracy. Tracy is a Ooh, let me just open it. Tracy is a fellow carnival. Um, it's a diet that we're on, carnival, keto, and it basically restores your health and helps you lose weight. That's the bottom line. It gives you back your energy levels. So, cheeseburger for lunch, yeah? Ooh, ribeye for steak. Come on. Ribeyes are... In England, I don't know how much they are where you are, Tracy, but where we are, they're a rip-off. Ribeye steaks are a rip-off. Right, let's see what else we found here. Let me just see. Um, with Colonel Tom Parker. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to do. I was going to go on YouTube. Like, this is an experiment, guys. Before I just start, because I'm going to read to you, but I just, it's a bit boring. So I thought... I'll just type in Colonel Tom Parker and just see and read some of the comments that people um, put on other channels on YouTube and just get a feel for how people feel about Colonel Tom Parker. It was just an idea. We're going to try it. So I'm going to just click on any video. Come on through here. Sons of Kroon, guess they're talking about so I'm gonna let's just see All right actually that one's only got one comment but let's see what it says he gambled with Elvis's money and wouldn't want to be him on judgment day what a scammer and shame on him that didn't surprise me right so I'm gonna do a bit of that because I just think it's interesting only on the Colonel Tom Parker ones right so let's go een tijdje geduldig posten bij het Hilton. Oh. Is het bingo? Uh, I might not be English, but hang on. Deze the, sluwe the, oude man is the fit, Oh, I like the, the footage. Is. I'll play it to you, just the footage, so you can see him on it. He's obviously very elderly here. He did live old, didn't he? I think, I think he died in 96. Didn't he live till he was 80-odd? This might be the last footage of him ever filmed. See a little bit more. There he is there. And didn't even have a wife that looked after him. Okay. Let's see if there's any English comments on that. Here we go. 50% of Elvis's earnings went into this guy's pocket. And then they old habits die hard because he's at a, he's at a casino, right? We all know that he had serious gambling problems at the uh, the Vegas casinos, and it is if you go by the movie, the like the Baz Luhrmann movie, and a lot of the things that we read and YouTube videos, they say that the deal for Elvis to play at Vegas was done on a table on a piece of paper, and all because Colonel Tom Parker had a massive debt to the owners of the casino. Now, is that true? I don't know. Right, let's keep looking. It's said that he owed lots of money to Las Vegas casinos, and that is why he pushed Elvis to have a grueling touring schedule. Touring schedule. 
Come on, we all know that towards the end, Elvis was massively overworked. There's some swear words here. They even call him an alien demon. Alien demon. We've got very opportunist manager, could not manage at all. Um, but he was Dutch. Did you know that, guys? He was Dutch. I've heard the story that he even was involved in a murder. And that's why he left the country. And the other story I heard was that the reason he got fat, no offence to people that are overweight, but the reason he became overweight was because it allowed him to avoid being drafted into the army. That's what I've heard. Uh, let's have a look. So we've got an ambitious as he was and addicted to games, Elvis would not exist as an entertainer without this man's knowledge. It took losses and damages for the legend to happen. So I don't know if I agree with that, but many do feel that he would not have become as famous as he did unless the colonel met him. Because what it is, Elvis locally was very famous, you know, I think in 55. So it was the colonel, they say, that massively boom, Massively. So... Which is probably partly true, isn't it, guys? In a period of an hour and a half, he... Oops. We went to crab table. And he called me and said, listen, said, you got to stay with me here. And I said, well, I said, you know, I said, I've got to go upstairs early. He said, no, you stay here. And he said, I'll get you up there on time. And I said, okay. So in a period of an hour and a half, he lost over a million and a quarter. I, and I said, I turned around and looked at him. I said, you know, you've got to be wealthy. I said, I, good God. He said, well, it all works out in the end. I himself at the table with stacks of chips. Larry, he said, come on, come here, come here. Sit next to me. He said, I'm not doing too well. I need some luck. I said, okay, Colonel. And I felt so uncomfortable. I really did. After about five, ten minutes, I said, Colonel, maybe you'll do better now. I hope you will, but I have to get back upstairs. So I left. The colonel was there for hours upon hours upon hours until like five o'clock in the morning, and he lost one and a half million dollars that night. And we were the crap Crazy. So, I mean, it's obvious <clears throat> he had a very serious gambling problem. So let's just find just a couple more because it's quite interesting. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, oh, wait, I still want to read some more of these comments. So I keep forgetting. Right, let's go on that one. There's, there's 800 comments on this. Um, he held Elvis back from touring abroad, enjoying his life, because it was said that Parker couldn't travel abroad. He was a disgusting, greedy man. And also, I've been looking into things a bit, and Priscilla was good friends with him, and so was Jerry Schilling. They were close. And I've seen Jerry Schilling defending... Colonel Tom Parker and Priscilla defending Colonel Tom Parker and saying that he was a kind man. Uh, I think he was unlucky with his one of his wives caught cancer and she was saying how great he was looking after her. Let's have a look. Colonel, T Colonel Parker was unable to obtain a passport. Therefore, therefore, he could not travel outside the USA. He had a background of violation and his passport was never obtained. He would not let Elvis perform without him. And he's a wretched man. I could probably do a whole video just on these comments, guys. Um, so Tracy says he did serve in the American military during the 1920s and was medically discharged as mentally psychotic. And yet he lived out his days with his gambling addiction and lost his fortune. And I know that also there was some litigation, wasn't there, where a judge had ordered to look, someone to order to look into this 50-50 deal that was had and, and it was found that it was very unfair. And I think they had a settlement. I think he might've got 2 million and then all rights were handed back to Elvis Presley Enterprises. Um, so I don't know all the details of that. It's just something I read. But I've also read that it wasn't all 50-50. I've heard 
but it was 50% of um, all the merchandising, all that kind of stuff. But on the record sales, it was 25%. Now, I don't know if that's correct, but I do think there were different percentages for different parts of the Elvis Presley business. Let's have a look. Uh, so again, he couldn't travel abroad. He didn't have a passport. He was illegally in the States. And Elvis, it says here, Elvis was a very loyal man and this is why they never parted ways. Um, it says here, Tom Parker was part Canadian and couldn't tour outside of the outside of North America. Because I think Elvis did, did perform in Canada, didn't he? I'm sure he did. You tell me, guys. It says here, Colonel Tom Parker was a smart businessman. He was very sweet. The old man who helped Elvis get fame. He was the backbone. Okay. And I do see in different interviews people defending Colonel Tom Parker, saying that Elvis did need him. I wonder what your views are on that, guys. Let's go a bit more. Let's click on another one. He is generally conceded, uh, Colonel Parker, and to those who don't know it, let's tell them right now that Elvis's success was part Elvis, part Colonel Parker. Which part was yours? Because that was the less vis visible part. I think mine was the least part. But explain it to me. What was it? What well, did you do uh, for him to, to, to help bring him to the public's attention? I, I did all the promotion, the outdoor advertising, and he did the show on the stage, and the fans made it possible. You can promote all you want to, but if the people don't want to buy a ticket, it doesn't help. So I did my part, Elvis did his show, and we were lucky. Great talent, and we had a great show and a lot of fun. It is general. Well, I think that's very fair. I think the way he speaks about Elvis there is very fair. He doesn't take all the credit. He says he was lucky or we were lucky. And they were in the right place at the right time. And I think that's quite, I'm actually quite like that. I have seen it before. I think all of us have seen all these clips, haven't we? Us Elvis fans. Um, no luck to it. Elvis's success still is, his, is that he was beautiful. He had a beautiful voice and charisma. He sure did. Let's listen. So Colonel, right, Colonel Parker did the part that held Elvis back. He made him do... The cardboard movies in the 1960s that he hated and he prevented him from doing the real movies that he wanted to do. He prevented him from doing A Star Is Born. Yep. Now, the other thing I heard, that he almost, he was able to do West Side Story. He played the lead in West Side Story. You imagine that, guys, if he did that. And then the other one was it Midnight Cowboy, the lead role in Midnight Cowboy. You imagine if he got that. Yeah, that would have been amazing. Prevented him from singing I Will Always Love You. And I've heard that before, that Dolly Parton wanted him to sing it. Um, but I think the colonel wanted Elvis to have half the royalties. So didn't let him do it. This is what, you know, This is, we've all heard these things, haven't we? And stopped him from performing internationally. And we all know, because he didn't have a passport, did he? All right, I actually like these. I'm going to go back and find another one. Um, let's have a look. I like the shorts because it's nice and short. Right, this is, oh yeah, so this is good. Let's see. I think this is where the Colonel interrupts Elvis. Come on up with the camera. Come on, The, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the belt is an award from the. Come on through here. As soon as the crew gets through talking about it. So his name was Andreas, which is the same name as my brother. My my twin brother is called Andreas, which I find a bit amusing. Nearly forty years on, myths and legends. Oh, it's one of my old videos. So this is one of my videos I did about a year ago. 
So this was before, I think this was before I started talking on my videos when I was just doing one minute stories on shorts. Colonel Tom Parker well, I'm actually talking. did have a serious problem with his gambling. It was out of control. And he was known to have owed the Las Vegas Hilton $30 million at the height of his debt. So let's have a listen to Larry Geller. One night, I walked out to the casino. I just left Elvis. This was after his show. And I noticed there was a large group of people roped off. And they were all in front of a table watching someone gamble. And as I walked up, it was Colonel Parker. And Colonel Tom Parker had secured a fantastic deal for Elvis at the Las Vegas Hilton. It was newly opened. And it was a regular occurrence for the customers of the Las Vegas Hilton to see the Colonel gambling in the casino. Colonel Tom Parker. It's funny because I don't even remember making that. I think it was about a year ago. And it was it was when YouTube had started saying to me, look, you need to talk on your video. So for me to talk on a video was quite a stretch. It was very nerve-wracking. So I just find that interesting. I'll have a look, see if there's any comments on it. Um, it's all too late now. Everyone hollering about what Elvis, what everyone should have done to help or save Elvis. No one really understands what being in the whirlwind of fame does to a person's time. He also had to support everyone. His family wouldn't leave him alone. They turned up at Grayson with their hands out with some sob story towards the end Elvis's life. Towards the end of Elvis's life, he even said he was too tired. The first person to go, to go should have been Colonel Tom Parker. The second, he should have fired all the Memphis Mafia except Jerry Schilling Ooh. and possibly Billy Smith. Billy gossiped too much, though. So I don't know about that, did he? Um, that's one of the first negative things I've heard about Billy Smith. Um, so he should have gone to, uh, left the US, gone to Switzerland and got himself clean, closed down Grayson and stayed away from the US. <laughs> that's a bit of an extreme and Priscilla should have stayed away from Scientology. I agree with that. Right, so let's have a look, see what else is there. Right, here we go. It's another one that I made. I don't know if I talk in it, but let's just play it. Elvis was a hit. His record was getting major local airplay. His personal appearances with Scotty Moore and Bill Black were the hottest attraction around. Talent promoter Tom Parker realized Elvis's potential and bought his contract from Sam Phillips for a fast $35,000. The colonel told the family, you know, uh, that he would take him, and within a year's time, he would be, you know, this big star, and, and he said, I'll promise you within a year, a year and a half, he'll be a millionaire. And he lived up to that, so it really bit, bit bonded, you know, heavy with, with uh, uh, Elvis and Colonel and, uh, and, and, of course, Barnett and Colonel, actually. As far as I got it, she, you know, she was quite content, pretty much like it was, but she praised everything he done, so she naturally went along with it. Okay, so we've got an advert coming. We've got an advert coming, so I'm going to let the advert play. So I, I like that. That was one of my old videos. And the truth is, Colonel Tom Parker did live up to his promise. He did make him a million. Let's have a look. Is there any more? Um, we, all right, let's have a look. Right, just wait for this video to end. We'll play another one. So the promoter, terrible artistic manager, unfortunately, Elvis did not like confronting. He just went along with it. Well, I'm just waiting for the advert to end. Boom. Gone. Right. By himself at the table with stacks of chips called the Wheel of Fortune. And the odds of winning that game are the worst. And in an interview with the Memphis Mafia talking about the Colonel gambling problems, they called him a degenerate gambler. He could never win 
He was chasing a dead end. Better if you play craps or blackjack. He's at the table and he spots me in the crowd. Larry, he said, come on, come here, come here. Sit next to me. He said, I'm not doing too well. I need some luck. Give me some good thoughts, Larry. I said, okay, Colonel, and I felt so uncomfortable. I really did. And it's well known that Larry Geller had lost respect for the Colonel because he felt that the Colonel was massively using Elvis to help pay off his gambling debts. By himself. That's funny, I've seen these old videos I've made. That's funny, funny. I'm talking very slowly. So <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm very nervous. Right, anyway, let's keep going. So let's just ask, let's ask a few questions because I could just keep playing these videos, but I want to ask a few questions. All right, there is one. I will play this because this one is about the movie deals. And I know that everyone has always said that they feel that it was Colonel Tom Parker's fault that Elvis never only did a few good movies because he did do some good movies. I really believe that Elvis could have been a great actor. I really do. I think in Jailhouse Rock and King Creole, he's amazing. Right. In a candid interview with Colonel Tom Parker, he admits that Elvis was destined to be a superstar and that it wasn't because of him that he became a movie star and that anyone could have managed Elvis and Elvis would have shot to fame quickly. But what he does go on to say is that he negotiated the best deals possible for Elvis and Elvis even got royalties for 25 of the movies he made which was unheard of in those days and Elvis even though he grew bored and fed up with the movies was the highest paid movie star for many many years thank you everyone well I make a good point because the truth is Elvis at the time was being paid the most money for a movie and getting a percentage of the profits and no one else had ever had that. It was unheard of. And he was getting paid the most money in the world than any other movie star. So you must give credit for that part, at least half of it to Colonel and then obviously the rest to Elvis. So it's the truth guys. And I think, the impression I get is the reason they kept going for the cheesy movie formula is because those movies at first, in the earlier 60s, um, I think there was 33 movies, is that correct? But those movies in the early 60s, not so much the late 60s, I think Change of Habit was the last one, wasn't it? In 69, I think, yeah? But those movies, and initially he made two a year, and then it jumped to three a year, but those movies in the box office at the cinema, you know, the ticket sales, the ones where El Elvis was singing and where it was a bit corny made more money. And I think in the end, it was always about the profit margin and making the most money because the films that were slightly more dramatic seemed to make less money. And, you know, the girls are all screaming for Elvis. They want to see Elvis. Um, so... He was sort of between a rock and a hard place. He sort of felt like he had to make them so he could get the money in. He'd already signed the contracts. Very difficult. Very difficult, I think. So I just want to ask a few questions. All right, there's another one. Right, I keep playing these videos. because I, I keep finding videos that I made about a year ago. Now, this one is to do with um, he's moaning that Colonel Tom Parker was altering his music. Let's have a listen. Elvis is the most underrated producer in recorded history. This is one of the big arguments that he would have with Colonel. Colonel would tamper with the mixes uh, after he would do a session. He would tamper with them and he'd bring Elvis's voice out. As Elvis liked, you know, sometimes he would like to blend in with the, the background and have them stick out. And Colonel just wanted Elvis's voice out. Why is that, Colonel? <laughs> Colonel was Elvis's promoter manager probably meaning well but i would hear him on the phone to rca in new york marie says she can't hear elvis with all that stuff going on you know we can't hear elvis 
So that was the colonel's first wife. I think the orders were right there. Pull Elvis out. Pull the background down. Oh, my God. All hell broke loose. The colonel would deny everything. He said he didn't have anything to do with it. But he did. It's funny how I, it's funny how I, I, because what, because YouTube didn't like me just posting videos straight. So I had to really thoroughly edit every piece and I would bring in lots of different short video clips and pictures and I would spin them around um, to keep YouTube happy because they didn't want me just, just to copy things. They wanted my version of it, which is why everything's spinning around like that, guys. Um so I hope you don't mind me playing these little clips. Are they okay, Tracy? Are you like getting them through the through your screen? Uh, are you, or is it all a bit too fast and shaky? Please let me know, Tracy. Yeah. So right, let's go back. Okay. Right. Let me just see what that is. Tom Parker's fan engagement strategies. I think that's really right. Let's have a look. Okay, so I'm now going to just ch start changing what I'm doing. I'm going to go a bit more basic and just how did Tom Parker meet Elvis? Just just to see what what comes up. Ooh, we've got a helicopter going over. So Tom Parker had seen Elvis perform in October 1954 and met him backstage through the Elvis manager, Bob Neal. Neal knew Parker, who had many, many connections in the entertainment business and could take Elvis to the next level and wanted the young singer and the promoter. I think Sun Records was actually called Memphis Records um, when, I know we all know it as Sun Records, but I'm pretty sure it was called Memphis Records. How old was Elvis when he started with Colonel Tom Parker? He was 20 years old. So Tom Parker and Elvis, 1955, the contract was signed between Elvis and the Colonel at almost the same time as Elvis's contract with RCA. Even though Elvis was 20 at the time, it was also signed by Vernon and Gladys. And I think we know that at first, uh, Vernon and Gladys were quite taken by the Colonel because he made some very big promises, promising to make him a millionaire unless that's just a rumor and hearsay but let's say that it's true and he did make him a millionaire elvis was the highest paid movie star in the 1960s as cheesy as the movies were yeah so how much money did colonel tom parker take from elvis members recording service owned by sam phillips yeah that's right and i've got i found some old pictures of memphis recording services um it's all there on youtube and on google right so how much did colonel tom parker get from elvis terrell said the reality is that colonel tom parker received 25 percent of the record and movie deals and split merchandising deals 50 50. colonel parker did receive 50 percent of the revenue from elvis's tours um yeah, so this is what I was saying earlier in the video. It wasn't 50-50 everything. It was 25%, like I just said, on the movie deals. And then it was 50% on the merchandising. But yes, and this is quite upsetting, really. On the Vegas tours, he did get 50%. Now, that that's a shame, isn't it? That Elvis had to work that hard in Vegas and was doing two or three shows a day. And half of it was going straight in the colonel's pockets. Not good. Not good, guys. Did Colonel Parker attend Elvis's funeral? They worked together until death. Parker attended the funeral. His choice of attire shocked everyone. All right, so I wonder how he was dressed. So here we are. When did Elvis split from Parker? And I think this is what to do with Elvis Presley Enterprises. And they say... The final split came 25, 28 years after he died. No, 20, no, not died. 28 years after his association with Elvis in June 1983. Um, 
everything was severed. No more. Colonel did not get any more money. Right, here's a good question, guys. Did, El uh, did Elvis Presley like Colonel Tom Parker? And then here it says, I don't think I would have ever been a huge if it wasn't him. He's a brilliant man. And this is what Elvis said in 1956. Yeah, but he said it when he was very young. I agree. In 1956, Elvis really did believe that Colonel Tom Parker had shot him into the stars. Because don't forget how much changed. He, he, had, he had the RCA deal. He had the movie deals. He'd made a few movies. So, and he, was, he had suddenly become a household name around every, the world in every country. And, Colonel, and Elvis just thought, my God, the Colonel is doing his job well. So I do think in the early years, Elvis was really happy with the, with the success they were having. Okay, right. Let's uh, let's just just put. Let's see if we can. I think I did put a few notes on my right. Here we go. So we've got the Elvis Australia site. They do seem to have some information here. I just I'll read a bit of it. I'll just see if it's any good, guys. So nearly as legendary as his famous client, Colonel Tom Parker, Elvis Presley's manager. He was mysterious and colourful, and under his guidance, his one and only client, Elvis Presley, reached unimaginable heights. Well, he did have other clients before, didn't he? Wasn't he more into the sort of country music acts? I'm trying to remember the name. Sorry, there's a helicopter going over. So, Colonel... Oh, it's literally above our head now. Can you, can you hear it? Right, off it goes. Right, Colonel Tom Parker, involved in the music industry, began a music promoter in the late 1940s. I think it's hovering above our head. Hey, you're interrupting my live stream. Um, Right, that's it. He's going. Is he going? Let's read some comments while we wait for him to go. Um, Memphis, right, okay. That's why Lisa Marie's lawyer was appointed to investigate the dubious contracts against Priscilla's objections. So Colonel Tom Parker's involvement in the music industry began as a music promoter in the late 40s, working with such country music stars as Minnie Pearl, Hank Snow, June Carter, Eddie Arnold, as well as the film star Tom Mix. During this time, he received the honorary title of Colonel in 1948 from Jimmy Davis, the governor of Louisiana. His involvement with Elvis Presley began when he booked Presley as the opening act for Canada, Canadian singer Snow. On August the 15th, 1955, Elvis Presley was signed by Hank Snow Attractions. Hank Snow Attractions. All right, I'm shouting a bit because I'm trying to speak over the helicopter, but it literally is hovering above our head. You might not be able to hear it. Right. Shortly thereafter, Colonel Parker took a full control of the recording the limitations of Sun Studios negotiate. I'm going to shut the door. One minute. I'm going to shut the door. Let's see if that shuts it out a bit. Aha! A little bit better, guys. A little bit. I'm going to put a complaint in about helicopters in the area. Uh, so let's play this video, guys. It's a legend, a showbiz pro with an all-time curry man's flair for bringing them into the tent. Colonel Tom Parker saw Elvis Presley for what he could be, and as his personal manager, launched him on the royal road to stardom. To mark the Elvis Presley anniversary, Colonel Parker is playing host in the Elvis Suite, the rooms where Presley stayed when he was playing the Las Vegas Hilton, then the International Hotel. The suite has been filled with Presley memorabilia for just this week. At age 78, Colonel Parker generally declines interviews, but he agreed to talk to us earlier today from Las Vegas. 
It is generally conceded, uh, Colonel Parker, and to those who don't know it, let's tell them right now that Elvis's success was part Elvis, part Colonel Parker. Which part was yours? Because that was the less vis visible part. I think mine was the least part. All right, so we've already Which watched that bit. Was it? Okay, right, let's keep reading that. Let's go. Just click on it a minute, just clicked off. Bing. Right, um, here we go. So, um, right, here we go. Parker was a master promoter. Colonel Tom Parker took a full control of the recording and limitations of Sun Studios, so Memphis uh, Studios, uh, and negotiated a deal with RCA Victor for $35,000 on November the 21st, 1955. Parker was a master promoter who wasted no time in furthering Presley's image. Colonel Parker managed Elvis Presley from 1955 until the singer's death in 1977. Prior to managing Presley, Parker helped transform Eddie Arnold into a country superstar with his own radio show, movie roles, Las Vegas bookings, and an unparalleled to resume of one record. In steering the careers of both men, Parker revolutionized the artist management role and displaying an unprecedented marketing savvy whilst exercising near total control. His energetic, all-encompassing management style create a blueprint that is still followed today. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, guys, but... Parker, a purposeful, perceptive, and mysterious character, was born Andreas Cornelis van Kooch in Breda, Holland, and entered the United States illegally in 1929 after serving in the army for three years in Hawaii. He moved to Florida, where he joined the Johnny J. Jones and the Royal American Carnivals, passing himself off as a native West Virginian under the name of former commanding officer, Tom Parker. That's interesting. Right. After several years of carnival life, Parker settled down and became a director of the Tampa Humane Society. He was, among other things, Tampa's chief dog officer, where he developed a, re a remunerative range of pet services pitches and translated seamlessly into showbiz promotion. Okay. I'll just, there's an old video here. I'll play it and just see what happens. While making a personal appearance for the Elvis Presley commemorative stamp at the Las Vegas Hilton, Colonel Tom Parker defended his relationship with Elvis. He gave this rare television interview exclusively to his Edition. Scripts. I never read Elvis read scripts. The boy brought me step William Mars. I had nothing to do with him picking whatever picture he wanted. Colonel, I've spoken to some people in the so-called Memphis Mafia, and they told me that one of the reasons Elvis got so heavily involved in drugs was because he was frustrated with his career, a career path that you led him on. What do you think of that? Well, those that do that, they did it because they got paid for it. Oops, they paid him. We have quite you can't a really hear it, can you? Right, it's not really loud enough, so I'm going to jump to the next bit. Right, he started off with Gene Austin, Roy Acuff, Ernst Tubb, focusing on the first Florida tours exclusively, but gradually expanded. Okay, I don't really want to know about that. I want to know more where, he, where Elvis comes along. By early 1955, Parker had set up the rights on the emerging Elvis Presley, whom he placed as an opening act on tours by his new client, Hank Snow. Um, by August, Parker had acquired a controlling interest in Presley's management contract, and two months later set up a deal with RCA to purchase Presley's contract from Sun Records for the unheard of amount, $35,000, which was, in those days, was a massive amount of money, and I think Sam Phillips needed the money as well with a £5,000 going to Presley. All right, so he only got $5,000. 
of that 35,000. That's interesting. That just shows how poor Elvis was. Well, not poor, but it shows how Elvis would have thought that that was an absolute fortune for because for him to accept 5,000 out of 35, that says a lot to me. Under Parker's exclusive guidance, Presley went on to become one of the most influential cultural figures of the 20th century and a tribute to talent, a gift for communications that continues to, to defy definition. Parker seduced and secured, no, Parker secured a Presley broad national exposure through television at the time when the other managers feared that the new medium would undercut the value of a personal appearance. Calling the shots in Hollywood, Parker made Presley a number one box office star and kept the entertainer career alive during his two year stint in the army. Well, I'll be honest, you guys, even if he didn't try and keep his career alive whilst Elvis was in the army, come on, no one was going to forget Elvis. No chance. Impossible. Did you see it? The old man asked, shifting his mountains of heaps of flesh to the edge of the chair. His eyes open. Oh, what's that? I don't know. They're talking about O.J. Simpson. I don't even know why. Right, let's have a look. The giant marquee outside the Las Vegas Hilton. Farewell, Colonel Tom Parker. No, this is just different stuff. Come on, we want juicy stuff about Elvis. Right. If Elvis was unknowable by his manager's design, the Colonel was beyond known, even to his own family. In 1980, no, no we don't want to read that, guys. Some pictures of him. that He's actually asleep there. I mean, there are actually, actually quite a few pictures showing them together, isn't there? I, th I think sometimes Elvis actually liked Tom, Car Tom Parker. Sometimes. Right, let's see what else I put. I did click on some tabs. Oh, I know what it was. It was comparing. Right, it was comparing the the Baz Luhrmann film and the way that, that Tom Hanks played him to, to reality. So does the phrase, that's all right, mama, apply to the new Elvis movie? As that's all. Let's have a look. All right, let's just start again. So, so it says here, what Elvis gets right and wrong. The real Colonel Tom Parker. His accent, right, this is comparing the movie, the Elvis Baz Luhrmann movie, to the reality of the real Tom Parker. So his accent wasn't so theatrical and he was way funnier than Baz Luhrmann gives him credit. But according to Alana Nash, who spent time with the real Colonel Tom Parker in the 90s, there were times when he was just as scary as what you see on screen. I thought I actually thought Tom Park's version of him was OK. Thought he did a good job of it. In 1963, Colonel Tom Parker and Elvis Presley audacious manager who had gotten his start selling candy apples at carnivals read in the paper that franklin delano roosevelt presidential yacht the uss P potomac was going to be salvaged some called it a floating white house but parker who was born in holland 1909 as andreas cornelis van kujic and never became an american citizen didn't care about that he saw the potomac as just another snow job and as he called his art of the con, he would donate the rusting hulk to charity as a PR and feather in the cap for his client, Elvis Presley. And I did, I've seen the footage of all this. Parker was no good. Took advantage from Elvis. Elvis Munn did not let Parker, would not let come to England. Yes, that's right, Teresa. Um, on the February the 14th, 1964, five days after the Beatles made their debut on The Ed Sullivan Show, Elvis sat at a press conference with the colonel on the pier of the Long Beach, California, with the actor Danny Thomas. There, on behalf of St. Jude, the Memphis Research Hospital, Thomas found that he to help cures the catastrophic childhood diseases. He graciously accepted the piece of blah, blah. And Thomas is said to have called the boat 
sell for cash and press cameras clicked away and freshly painted Pontomac gleamed in the background. The Colonel chuckled to himself. Elvis had paid $55,000 for the thing, but the Colonel snowman to the core apparently had only had one side of the yacht painted. Okay, that's I, I know I do know about this. I've watched the clips, the black and white clips. Um, Elvis looks great. So they're just talking about this charity event, aren't they? That, but right. Let's have a look. Hmm. So aside from arguably being the father of American popular culture through the marketing and merchandising of his client, Colonel negotiated one of the first one million. A per picture deals for a Hollywood actor and landed Elvis in the highest paying Vegas contract for the time and protected the exploitation rights for dead celebrities through his swift action for the Presley estate in 1977. He also staged the first live international soul concert via satellite and Elvis Aloha from Hawaii special in 1973. So then it says... But the Lerman's treatment, he is Satan in the snowman sweater and the bombastic director as a vulgar in his own way of Parker in his way, paying him little respect for his significant business acumen. OK, but this is more. Yeah. So this is talking about um, Tom Parker's. Hanks gives Parker a pan-European Nazi accent, but in real life, most people bought his story for hailing from Huntington, West Virginia, a relatively isolated area in the 1950s. His accent on the display in the rare interview with Ted Koppel in the 80s sounds more like a slight speech impediment mixed with the installation of rural upbringing. He had trouble with the consonant R, which sometimes came out of Mr. President. Hmm. Let's have a look. So the Colonel had a highly developed sense of humor that enthralled members of the Elvis entourage as well as actors. Hugh, Hugh O'Brien, whose Wire Earth tour uh, Parker promotes him in 1957, O'Brien told me that when he asked Parker why he insisted on doing business in cash, the Colonel said, because the boy there ain't nothing like cash. If there's God would have named it cash, he was also fond of saying, spend it now. You don't see any rehearsals with luggage racks on them. Okay. Come on, give me something juicy. So we've got here. So the idea of a Christmas special so he could turn Elvis into a 1960s Bing Crosby appears as a bumbling Rube into the insistent that Elvis sing Here Comes Santa Claus. It's funny, but renders Parker ridiculous. Sure. He was out of touch with the times, but then he didn't see the Phoenix-like potential of what the special could do for his attraction. And he called Elvis, but he never interrupted inept. He was fiercely loyal in his business dealings and determined to honour his contracts to the letter. Elvis was, yeah. So, um, come on, give me some more juicy stuff. No, not not feeling it on this one. Let's just um, I did put some other links on there as well. Colonel Tom Parker. Right here we go. So this is Wikipedia's version. I think I'm going to have to do this, and I'm going to have to go and get the kids from school. So we're coming up to an hour anyway. So there's going to have to be a part two of this because I think. Uh, there's a lot more I need to learn about Colonel Tom Parker, but I'm trying to learn it with you guys because I'm quite new to this. So he was born in June the 26th, 1909, um, and he died January the 21st, 1997, obviously commonly known as Colonel Tom Parker. He was a Dutch American entrepreneur, and he was best known, obviously, for being Elvis's manager, but he did manage other people. It says here that he died in Vegas, which I think Teresa did tell me that he lived out his days in Vegas playing on the slot machines. And it says here his business life was from 1938 to 1984. And he had married twice, one for Mary Mott. And I think this is the one that Priscilla talks about, that 
died from cancer. And then we have Luan Miller in 1990, which was more, I think, was more his carer, really, wasn't it? So it says that Parker was born in the Netherlands and entered the United States illegally when he was 20 years old. He adopted a new name and claimed to have been born in the United States with a background working in carnivals. Parker moved into music promotion in 1938, working with one of the first popular crooners, Gene Austin, um, and Eddie Arnold, Hank Snow, Tommy Sands, Jimmy Davis. And there was a campaign to become governor of Louisiana. And this is where he got his honorary colonel. And this is why they called him the colonel. Parker entered... No, encountered Presley in 1955 by 1956 had become his manager with Parker help Presley signed a recording contract with the RCA Victor, which led to commercial breakthrough in 1956 with his sixth single Heartbreak Hotel and the career as one of the most commercially successful entertainers in the world. Parker received more than half of the income from this enterprise, an unprecedented figure for the music manager. He negotiated Presley's lucrative merchandising deals and media appearances and is said to have influ influenced Presley's personal life, including his decision to accept military service in 1958 and his marriage to Priscilla Bulow. And in 1967, Parker encouraged Presley to make musical films and they became the focus of his career during his commercial decline in, in the 1960s until the 68 comeback and returned to the touring. Parker influence waned in the later years, but he continued in his management until his role, until 1977. Well, that's a little bit wrong, because the musical movies were being made around 63 and onwards, weren't they? Isn't that when he did uh, Viva Las Vegas with Anne Margaret? So it was before 1967. Parker managed the Presley's estate for the rest of his life, having previously sold the rights to Presley's earnings recording last year. He struggled to secure a steady income and his financial situation worsens after he sustained um, some gambling losses. Parker's final years were spent living in Las Vegas until his declining health in 1997. I think even that's a bit incorrect because they did eventually, and a judge ordered that he would be investigated this 50 so that isn't completely correct, Wikipedia. Right, let's have a look. Let's see if we're going to learn anything. It says, biographies usually mention 1927 as the year of Parker's first attempt to immigrate to the US. But according to the Holland America passenger list that became available online in 2023, he was sent back from New York to the Netherlands on March the 20th, 1926. He returned home to Rotterdam on the steamship SS Veendam. And then it says the address. And in the entry of passengers, he's there. And this can still be viewed online. In 1929, aged nearly 20, um, Parker returned to the US, this time to stay, having a previous experience in the traveling entertainment industry. He found work at the carnivals, traveled with a Chautauqua, what is that? Chautauqua, uh, educational tent show. A few months later, he enlisted in the United States Army under a false identity to disguise his illegal entry into the country. His new name was Colonel Tom, no, was Tom Parker. He's said to have been taken from the officer who interviewed him during the enrollment. He completed basic training in Fort McPherson in Georgia. Parker served two years in the 64th Coast Artillery and Fort Shafter, Hawaii, and shortly after was re-enlisted at Fort Barrancas in Florida. Although he had served honorable time, he went AWOL in Florida and was charged with desertion. He was punished with solitary confinement from which he emerged with a psychosis that led him to spend two months in a mental hospital. His condition got uh, caused him to be discharged from the army. <laughs> I bet he put it on. I bet he put that on, guys. In 1935, he married the 27-year-old Marie Francis. They struggled to make ends meet during the Great Depression, working confident tricks and travelling across the country in search of work. Parker later said 
that at the time he had to live on as little as one dollar a week. I think that's it, guys. I could go a bit deeper into it, but I think that um, sort of covered the important stuff about about um, Colonel and Elvis. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. I may come back and do a part two. Because, you know, there's a lot more to his story, isn't there? Um, I've got to go and get the kids from school. So thanks for listening, guys. I'm trying to learn with you guys. So you're going to, it's going to come across. You can see that I'm not really that in the know with Colonel Tom Parker. I'm still trying to absorb it. And I think I'm going to go and watch a few documentaries and just get my head around it a bit more and then come back uh, doing another video where I'm a bit more clued up with it. But it's still very interesting. So it's still very interesting. So, so I'm going to say goodbye, guys. Thanks a lot. I'll come back later and we are going to do part, I think, six of this one and part four of this. Or it could be part seven and part five of this. We're going to have a little read through together and be critical with this. So thanks, guys. Thanks for watching me. Um, a lot of you will come up. will watch this later. So good day to you if you're just turning on your PC or your phone or your laptop. And I hope you enjoy what we've done. Thanks, guys. All the best. I'll give you a wave.